Hey guys, I'm back with another uh, taste comparison between some popular brands. These are all American lagers. We've got the American adjunct lagers and then uh, two American pilsners, which is a type of lager. Uh, those are actually all grain. So really what I'm interested in is first of all, which one is the best one, but also if I can detect the differences between an adjunct uh, lager and a regular lager, because uh, Obviously in home brewing, we say that uh, corn sugar doesn't really upset the flavors. Now these bottles are not in front of the glass that they are, but um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna start on the left-hand side here. So, it's a nice pale beer, more uh, a little bit more watered down than I would prefer, but It's got kind of a sickly sweet smell. All right. Well, the mouthfeel is really thin. Um, I can be generous and say that this is not natural light, but um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not really excited about this beer. I'm not sure that uh, this I would pay anything for, or rather buy it uh, on my own. This has a little bit more yellow on it. Mm. Kind of a floral aroma. It's still pretty thin, but there's a really nice earthy bitterness to it that I like. So I'm gonna put that in a, uh, I like this one category. Another pale, another pale uh, beer. Hmm, there's an aroma I don't exactly recognize. It's kind of malty. Multi floral. Mm. Oh, it's sweet. This is not a beer that I am ever going to drink again. That tastes exactly like something that I'm going to avoid. <clears throat> It's not natural light, but it's disgusting. All right, nice pale color. Wow, this almost smells like nothing. It's got a little thicker mouthfeel, but there's really no flavor to it, which is kind of disappointing, but I mean, it's better than being sweet, but um, I don't know, definitely not one of my favorites. So another really nice gold color. That smells kind of earthy. All of these beers really have a similar aroma. This is nice and bitter, not like an IPA bitter, but it's got a really nice earthy bitterness to it. And it's pleasurable. It really doesn't have a whole lot of feel in the mouth though. And this one is more of an amber color. So I'm guessing that this is probably the young one. There's a floral, malting aroma to this. Mm. Yeah, this has the mouthfeel of beer. This is very pleasant. This is a beer that I would definitely drink again. I'm pretty sure that's the Yingling, but um, 
Let's see, these are the three that I need to compare against each other. Ooh, that's the disgusting sweet one that uh, I wanted to avoid. Ugh. That one has a little bit of sweetness on it, too. Let me try this one again. All right, so I'm gonna rate uh, this one definitely last place. Let's see what it was. Miller Genuine Draft. Ugh, I'm not ever buying that again. I'm kind of surprised that I don't like it because it is a beer that I used to drink quite a bit, but that was 25 years ago. So that's last place. This one is going to be second to last. Miller High Life. Another one that I'm kind of surprised about. That one I was drinking quite a bit about 10 years ago. Then I think this one is the uh, next one. That is Budweiser. I'm really surprised that Budweiser beat uh, Miller. Then I have this one, which is Coors. So our top two are clearly the uh, non-adjunct lagers. So definitely there is a uh, unpleasantness to the adjuncts. So kind of interested to see which one's which. This is the La Black Blue. That's second place. And first place is Yangling. So uh, I'm very confident that I'm going to be buying more Yangling. But honestly, the La Black Blue is a little bit less expensive and it's pretty good. So I don't know. I haven't, I don't know which one I'm going to buy as far as the price, uh, price deliciousness, uh, compare, uh, comparison goes, but, um, definitely Yingling is number one and LeBlanc Blue is number two and the rest of these I could do without. Thank you guys. Y'all have a good one.